So section 12.7, we're going to talk about how to solve exponential and logarithmic equations. We've done all the legwork, we know all the properties of logarithms, we know really all the properties of exponentials, we're going to tie all this together. The one thing you need to know is, is what I've been talking about for the last three sections, logarithmic and exponential functions are inverses. What that means to you, in order to solve exponentials, you need logarithms. In order to solve logarithms, you need exponentials. Are you with me on that? Now, the only time that that does not apply is on these first two examples, which we've already done in this class. These should look really familiar to you, and you should be pretty rock solid on solving those ones. If you think about these, the idea was you're going to try to get common bases. You remember getting common bases? And you say, oh, right, well, I know that if this is 3 to the x and this is 9, I should write this as 3 to the x and 3 squared, because that's still equal to 9. Are you with me on that, folks? Mm -hmm. And then how much is x? Yeah, we understood that if our bases are the same, our exponents are equal, and we can solve exponentials like that if we can find common bases. Everybody's going to feel okay with that. Yeah, that's really old stuff, right? But that's going to be on your test, so you need to know that. The first thing you look for is can you find common bases? Also, over here, could you find common bases here? What's your base going to be for those? Five. Sure, you would write. 5 squared to the x, 5 to the third to the x minus 2. Is this coming back to you? Mm -hmm. This was a few sections ago, a couple sections ago. Of course, when you have exponents raised to exponents, you would get 5 to the 2 times x, and you get 5 to the 3 times x minus 2. Notice how the x minus 2 is in parentheses because you're going to have to distribute that. Still so far so good? You better wake it up today. We're going to move today if you couldn't tell. We had lots of coffee. <laughs> Great. No, I didn't. Your bases are the same. Of course, you can set your exponents equal to each other. Distribute. And solve. Now, of course, I went really quickly through that because we've done all of that before. Would you nod your head or raise your hand if you're okay with, with doing these two examples? Raise your hand if you are. Yeah, how about this row over here? Are you guys alright with that? So we're finding our common bases. We're setting our exponents equal. Sometimes they're very easy. Sometimes you have to do some work, but still it's, it's not that big of a deal as long as you can find those common bases. We know that's 5 squared, that's 5 to the third. We multiply those exponents. So 2 at 3 times x minus 2 we distribute and we solve. This should be a piece of cake from here on down, right? Subtract your smaller variable, get the x by itself. Here's the question. You're sure you're okay with this, right? Yep. You're sure you're okay with this one? Because you can find that five, okay. How about this one? Is that example different than the first two examples? Yeah. What makes it different? Um, here was pretty easy to find a common base, right? That's 3, that's a power of 3. Here it's easy to find a common base. That's a power of 5, that's a power of 5. Here, can you find a common base? So here's your idea for exponentials. The first thing you try to do in any case, if you have an exponential, which, which all three of these are exponentials, you'll look to see if you can find a common base. Why? Because it's pretty easy if you can find a common base. <coughs> Common base, no problem. Common base, no problem. Common base. Can you find a common base there? The question is, can you write either of these as the same number to a power? As a no, no. Through this is three. That, that's a, they're both prime numbers. There's no even, not even any factors besides one that go into that, and besides themselves. So there's no way to write these two things as a common base. Do you agree that there's no way to write those as a common base? So what are you going to do? Well, I just told you this about two minutes ago. In order to solve exponentials. Besides the ones you can get a common base on, in order to solve exponentials, you need logarithms. Are you ready to see how logarithms will help us here? Mm -hmm. This is going to be kind of cool. You're going to be very excited. You should be very excited about this. You should be. I hope you are. Here's the deal. Do you know how you can add something to both sides of an equation and subtract something to both sides of an equation and multiply and divide and take it to a power and do all that fun stuff to it? You remember all that stuff? Yeah. Is that an equation? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You can do pretty much anything you want to, to an equation, as long as you do it to both sides. both sides. We can even take a logarithm of both sides of an equation.
What logarithm did I choose? What base is that? Ten. Good, that's a common log. Why am I not choosing log, like log base three? I could, I could choose any log I wanted to, but we're gonna make it easy. If we, we don't wanna, we don't wanna choose any fancy logarithms. Choose either ln or log base 10. Natural log or common log. Most people choose common log. So it's called common. Are you okay getting from here to here? We can do whatever we want as long as we do it to both sides. What you can't forget to do is do it to this side too. Because a lot of people, they'll do it to this side because they see that x, they'll forget about this side. It is an equation. You've got to do both sides at the same time, exactly the same thing. Do you follow me on that? Now, why does this work for us? Well, I want you to think back to your logarithm properties and look at the left-hand side. There was one property I said, this is the coolest property. Without this property, we can't solve equations. That was, that was like two days ago. What property am I talking about here? What can you do with this? If you don't know right now, you should refresh your memory on the properties because you don't know them well enough. What can you do with this? I could write it differently. What can you do with that? Specifically, I'm looking at the exponent. What can you do with the exponent? Yeah. Yeah, do you remember the power property? I said, I got so excited, I said, this is cool, this is awesome. And you're like, I don't care, it just moves a number. Here's why it's so cool. If you remember anything about the power property, I said, whenever I have an exponent, which I have right here, I can move that to the front of my logarithm. Do you remember that property? So instead of having 3 to the x, I have x times log 3 equals log 7. You okay with that one? Now, why does it make it cool? Hey, check it out. You've got x times something. That's a number. Log 3 is a number. You can plug in your calculator, right? That's a number. How do you get rid of x times some number? How would you get rid of that log 3? As long as we divide by both sides. Or divide both sides by that. Not just the left-hand side, but also the right-hand side. What's going to happen on the left-hand side of our equation, folks? How much do we get? X. On the right-hand side, I hope you're seeing why all this stuff is coming together for you. This is why I was so particular on those properties. said you can do some things, but you can't do other things. This is one of those things you can't mess with. It doesn't look like any of those properties, so you just leave it alone. And you're done. That's it. Have you solved for X? Is x all by itself and have some expression without x on the other side? Yeah. That's your answer right there. Is it a number? Yeah. Could you figure it out? You could approximate it. Put it in your calculator. You can put log 7, log 3, divide those two numbers and get some approximation for that. Where's your hand feel all right so far? Good. All right. So, the first thing you do is I'll write a couple notes. Number one. You look for common bases like this. Why? Because your answers are nicer over here if you don't have a logarithm. You with me? You can work with that easier. So, number one, you try to find common bases. If you can't, then you take a logarithm of both sides. one more example together. Uh, I'll model for you the thought process on dealing with exponentials. That way you can kind of see how, how I'm thinking about it, maybe think about it the same way. So the first thing you're looking at, number one, you identify what type of problem you have. In this case, I'm looking at that and I say, is this an exponential? Is it? Yeah. Definitely an exponential. The x is in the exponent spot that makes it exponential. Second thing I do is, I, I try option number one. I say, can I find common bases between two and five in any way whatsoever? Yeah. If I can't do that, then option one's off the table, I go down to option two. If option one's available, it's easier, it's nicer because you get whole numbers, or you get fractions, or you get something without logarithms. <laughs> but if option one's off the table, option two comes along and says, you need to take a log of both sides. So I'm looking at that, I go, yep, exponential, no, no common bases. 
that means my next step is to take a log, not just of the left hand side, but also of the right hand side. After that, we only use one property. The one property we use is the power property for logarithms. It says any exponent can be moved to the front of our logarithm. And from there, it's kind of an easy problem to solve. We just have to divide both sides by whatever's being multiplied by our x. And sure, it looks a little nasty, but that's our answer. Log of 5 over log of 2. They're pretty quick, right? Is the math really, really hard? Yeah. Just remembering what, remember that the, the, the last like three, four chapters haven't been super hard math. It's just, well, maybe the quadratic formula. But besides that, I mean, it, it's just remembering what you can and what you can't do, remember the properties and know how to apply it. I guess that makes it hard if you're really not good at remembering that stuff. But that, that's really all we need to do in here is really focus on what you can and can't do with logarithms and how to solve these exponentials. Once you try one on your own, I'll change the problem just slightly and then we'll move on. Okay, so we think about it. Is it an exponential, first off? Yes. For sure. Can you find common bases? No. No, if you could, then you'd be doing it a different way. You just write them with common bases, set your exponents equal to each other, and solve that. You'd get a nice, nice value. Uh, however, if you can't find common bases, well, we know there's another option. There is, you can take a log of both sides. What do you do now? Okay, very good. We've got to move that x. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to do anything with this, right? Because it's in the exponent spot. The reason why we have to take a log is because that log property says, oh, you can move the x out front. That's what moves it from an exponent to something we can work with. That's why we use those logs. Show of hands, how many people made it that far, the first two steps? Good deal. Last step, what are you going to do? By what? Log of 9 over log of 5. What's our base again, by the way? 10. So we're talking about base 10 logs. You can choose any log of them you want. People usually choose a base 10, a, a common log for that. Now, one question, can I change the problem just a little bit? Would you still be able to do it? So up here at the top, let's not just have 5 to the x. Let's have 5 to the x minus 1. Let's go through the process again. Could you find 